Hello! Welcome to the third video in our USD for Developers series. Today, we'll be introducing you to custom schemas, the second key element of OpenUSD. Custom schemas are a fundamental aspect of USD development and a powerful tool for extending data to enable more complex and sophisticated virtual worlds. In the previous video, we learned about composition for sparse, non-destructive scene assembly. Custom schemas extend these data models further, enabling system behaviors beyond scene composition. Let's return to our flower pot example. As we saw in the previous video, this USDA snippet represents flower pot A's geometry mesh where its points and topology are defined. This information is formalized in the mesh schema in the USD Geom library. Each schema populates prim definitions in the USD schema registry, which contains all the names, types, and fallback values for all schemas. In USD, a stage is a composed hierarchy of prims, short for primitives, which are data containers representing individual nodes in the scene graph. Each prim consists of properties, including attributes and relationships, which can be formalized in schemas. The mesh schema, for example, defines the topology and points of the mesh. This ascribes meaning to prims with specific data models, allowing them to answer queries about their contents. Schemas imbue prims with typed, structured definitions. With standardized schemas, any USD-compliant runtime can interpret the raw data in a meaningful way. It's important to distinguish between data modeling and runtime behaviors in USD. While schemas define how data from a prim is structured, it's up to the runtime to interpret that data for a functional purpose. In other words, schemas provide a contract that dictates the structure of the data, but they don't dictate what the runtime does with that data. USD currently supports various types of schemas, including ISA or type schemas like mesh, as we saw in the flower pot example. ISA schemas can either be abstract or concrete, depending on whether they are instantiable or not. Abstract ISA schemas, such as Boundable, serve as a base for related sets of concrete schemas and cannot be instantiated, while concrete ISA schemas like Mesh can be instantiated in a scene hierarchy. These schemas are analogous to class inheritance in object-oriented programming. API schemas, on the other hand, are analogous to class composition, that is, imparting additional properties onto an already typed prim. Let's take a look at physics schemas, which are a good example of API schemas in practice. This is the rigid body API schema for physics. If we apply the rigid body API schema to our favorite flower pot in the kitchen set, we are merely writing an additional value into that prim's list of API schemas. Again, in the power of sparse, non-instructive overrides, we have now given the flower pot all the properties defined in the rigid body API, which can be queried and edited just like any other property on this prim. In this example, the physics schemas are used to give the necessary information to the PhysX runtime for real-time simulation of rigid bodies. The USD data models provide the foundation for the data interchange, and the RTX renderer can also visualize the simulation using the same information. It's important to note that the USD physics schema collaboration between NVIDIA, Pixar, and Apple doesn't include a physics engine or renderer. Instead, the schema serves as a canonical data model for rigid bodies, to which anyone can implement compliant physics engines and renderers. This highlights the separation between data modeling and runtime behaviors, as mentioned earlier. The process for standardizing new schemas comprises five steps. First, New schemas can be prototyped with custom properties in USD and iterated on until the data model and runtime behaviors are stable. Next, the schema definition is formalized and evaluated for trade-offs between representing it as a typed or API schema and other considerations. The schema can then undergo internal review alongside canonical assets that can be used to demonstrate the data model and seed automated testing for behavior implementations. The candidate schema is then published as a white paper and undergoes a broad review process across industries where it is iterated upon until consensus is reached. Finally, the new schema becomes a standard with a path to support in all USD-compliant implementations. As you can see, custom schemas with USD open innumerable pathways for more complex, sophisticated virtual worlds. OpenUSD itself comes bundled with core schemas such as geometry and shading, and new schemas are continuously being developed to further expand the ecosystem for digital twins and more. We hope you found this video helpful in understanding custom schemas. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the rest of our USD for Developers series to learn more about the other key features of OpenUSD.